guys, it's Kelly here, and I am back with another video for W Plus 9, and it is release week. It's very exciting. There's so much cuteness, and today I am going to be using the Garden Buddies set and the Get Well Gang. Like, just so much adorableness in this whole release. Like, I just, I love it all. So, I was talking to Dawn originally on the phone, and we were just having some conversation about um, what the images and what we wanted to use them and I was like I love the little garden buddies I think that they like that little boy totally needs a dog because my son his best friend is my dog Molly so this that's how this card these cards two cards were born um so I stamped the cat and the dog the little sickly cat and dog that are laying on the pillows except I took away their boo-boos um just by using my uh chamois and now they are just adorable, cute little kitty and puppy, and they are going to be best friends with this little girl and this little boy. So I stamped them down. I'm masking them with uh, masks I cut from the full sticky post-it notes. And then I'm going to do some ink blending, which basically I'm totally obsessed with lately, and I completely blame Laura Basson. Like, I, yeah every single one of her cards I was like oh my god that's such beautiful ink blending and then I want to ink blend all everything so that's what I'm doing <laughs> um, so I'm starting out with some distress inks basically what I did was for the girl and the cat I did wilted violet picked raspberry and mustard seed I laid down a very light uh, base layer and the masks were giving me a little bit of trouble, and these post-it notes always seem to give me a little bit of trouble wherever they have to lay on top of another post-it note. So I ended up taping it. Um, I think I, I don't even think I showed that part, but I ended up taping it down so it wouldn't move on me. So once I have my base layer down, I'm going to use these post-it notes again to create kind of a ground for my images. I don't want them just floating in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then it's also going to serve to mask for the stenciling I'm about to be doing. So the stencil that I used is actually by My Favorite Things, and it is called um, Concentric Circle. And I just thought that this would be really cute with the sentiment. Um, the sentiment that I picked is from the Garden Buddy set, and it says, Your friendship is like sunshine for the soul. So I thought that these would kind of look like little rays coming out from behind them, kind of like play on the sunshine thing. So I'm using the same colors over top of the stencil. I'm just being a little bit more heavy-handed with them. And then I'm going to move those masks from the bottom to the top so I can add um, a heavier layer of the bottom color, which in this case is Wilted Violet. And then I'm going to do a little bit of shadowing later, but basically I just wanted my purples to match. Um, that I was heavier handed on top of the stencil, so I needed the bottom to match the top without uh, getting rid of my stenciling. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all the masks because I'm done with the ink blending now. And I love it, just like I knew I would, because <laughs> I'm super into that right now. And then while I have, um, I'm all my fingers are all dirty, inky, everything else, I'm just going to go ahead and do the ink blending for the other card. And for this one, I used Blueprint, Sketch, Mode Lawn, and that Mustard Seed again. Um, yellow, I mean, there's a reason why yellow is the neutral for if you don't know the sex of your baby. Because it goes with pretty much everything. So, I'm going to do that. Same thing, lighter layer. And then I'll go ahead and use those same masks. Because I'm cheap and I'm not wasting more post-it notes. I'm just going to use what I have right there. I mean, if the sticky was gone, that would be one thing, but the sticky's totally still sticky, so I'm just going to use what I've already messed up. So I'm going to put that stencil back in place. I'm going to do the same thing again. All three of the colors, a little bit more heavy-handed. And this is just stencils are, you know, something that you can add to the background. I know Dawn did a, um, a video over on YouTube where she did ink blending, and then she, like, spritzed the background because it's distress ink. Um, it'll lift. And then she blotted up the color. That's a really cool way to do it. Um, there's a lot of just kind of fun ways that you can add texture uh, to your backgrounds. I happened to just, the stencil went with my sentiment. So that's what I went with. I didn't overthink it. Didn't overthink it. So again, flip those stencils around. And then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, or the stencils, flip those masks around to darken up the base. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the masks. And then for my images, I am going to um, do them in, with Copa coloring. So this video is a little bit longer because um, it's two cards. And even though I sped up the Copa coloring, this is about, 
um, two times, two and a half times the, um, whatever, normal time, two and a half times normal time. I don't even know what I'm saying, but hopefully you're getting what I'm implying. Anywho, um, because it took me so long to do this card, uh, it took me, two card, two cards, Kelly, two cards. Um, it took me about an hour and a half to do them. You don't want to sit here for an hour and a half. I don't want to talk for an hour and a half. So we just sped it up a little bit. Um, I did the face the same way that I always do. He doesn't have a ton of shadowing because he doesn't have a ton of hair that would be hanging over his face. But I added the shadows where his hair would hang over his face. I left the center of his face the lightest. And then, um, because that should be like your, I guess, your eye is drawn to what is light. So um, I did give him a little bit of a rosy cheek because he is a little boy. Um, not yet a man, just a little boy. And then I'm going to go ahead and give him jean overalls. So I picked out a couple of blues that I felt would be um, A, a very good match for blue jeans, and B, a very good match for the blue that I have in the card already. Um, I try to keep my cards fairly simple just because that's the style that I like. Uh, but especially when you have something where there's stenciling in the background, um, where you have a couple maybe different things to draw the eye, you don't want to confuse it with uh, a lot of crazy color. So I tried to keep things relatively simple as far as the color. Um, you'll see me add down towards his pant legs, even though he has these adorable little toddler legs, these cute, sweet little pudgy legs. Um, I'm trying to add some sort of texture to the flat overalls. So I, what I'm adding is his jeans bunching at the bottom. That's what those little teeny tiny little lines are for. And um, then I'm just kind of building those out and uh, leaving a highlight on the um, like the top of them because then when you go over it with the lightest color and it blends everything out is really when you can see that um, texture that comes in. I kind of got a little heavy handed um, with my light color and it really kind of blocked out the wrinkles I was adding in. So I did have to go back in and just touch those up. But I mean, that was really, um, really all I had to do to them. I picked out some yellow greens and some greens, uh, that I felt matched that mode law on the bus. And I'm going to do his pocket green and then the pillow that the dog is laying on. I love, 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 um, a navy and a neon green. And this is almost that. So I love the neon green next to that blueprint sketch. I think it's, um, it's just such a pretty combination. And this is such a traditional, um, boy color scheme, yellow, green, and blue. Um, so I'm just adding the shading underneath where the dog is laying, where the pillows are, pushed down by his paws it will be darker where they are plumped up like any you know when you sit on a, like a beanbag chair um one side goes up because your body weight is pushing it down so those are be where your highlights would be and then for right now I'm just going to leave it like that we'll add some detail to it later I brought in some uh yellows just for his shirt and his little buttons um and I did her shirt later on in the same yellows I didn't show you everything with her uh, because I showed you everything with him. So there's a lot of things like the um, overalls for her. I did the same exact way, so I didn't show that again. I just used a different color combination. Here I picked um, some warmer browns. These are the, what are they, E20s, I think. Yeah, they're the E20s. Um, my child, because <laughs> this is who I was thinking about when I was doing it. I was thinking about my dog and my son. Um, I am like a light brown, dark blonde. Uh, my husband is dark, dark. I have a feeling Nathan is going to be um, my husband's hair color because um, he's getting really dark as he gets, the older he gets, the more dark his hair is going to get. Uh, or has gotten, so I feel like it's just going to keep right on going along that same vein. So I picked out some uh, browns that I felt kind of matched him, and then I did it a very traditional, I'm sure you've seen hair color this way a hundred times, I kept it darker at the um, part, and darker like behind his ears, I left the highlight uh, on the center 
of each one. And then for the dog, I'm doing um, I'm doing it a little differently. I'm not doing flat color. I'm doing short flicking strokes. And the reason that I'm doing this is because as we build up the image, those short strokes will make it look more like fur and less like just flat color. So he looks kind of scary now. He looks kind of pinstriped. Um, but it will get better <laughs> as we move along, as we add more color, as they start to blend together. So one of the things with doing um, this type of uh, coloring when you're doing fur, you're not going to add all of your colors um, all over. You're you're only going to add like the short strokes of your darkest color where it's actually going to be the darkest. Uh, and this is something that I struggle with a lot because I know how I traditionally shade things. And so I want to put the dark color where I would normally put the dark color and with the fur because everything is not solid it really kind of looks funny when you do that so I've tried to train myself to just be um, to only put that color where I need it to be otherwise um, if my fur is the same color all over his body he's not gonna have any depth so once I'm done doing that I am gonna go I go from darkest to lightest lightest to darkest no lightest to darkest darkest to lightest don't even listen to me I don't even know what I'm talking about um, and because that light will pick up the dark uh, so it adds almost like a fifth and a sixth color because it pulls differently um, depending upon how it lays down on top of there so for now um, I'm filling in that little green because my mask didn't set right um, but so they're done and then I'm going to move on to the little girl we'll go back and add details to the cards but we're going to do that at the same time so here I use the same browns for him and her they're just going to be colored a little differently because their hair is different so for hers her highlight is going to be um, almost like a round headband because of the way that her bangs are drawn around her face so her highlight will be right above the bottom of her bangs um, and this just gives the, the image just a more round look and I'm trying to make sure that I don't get too heavy-handed with those darks at the base so I'm being very sparse of oh, sparse that's not even a word sparse that's the word we're looking for congratulations Kelly you know how to put a sentence together um, so I'm being <laughs> very light-handed with the dark color to make sure that I reserve that highlight and again I'm using the same colors for the cat and um, I had heard in another video I can't remember whose video it was that even if you use the same color combination as somebody else that it's always going to look different because you will use more or less than they will and this cat and that dog are a perfect example because by the time I'm done that dog is way darker than this cat and um, it's just good to know you know that you can use colors differently the same color combination differently and still get different results so I wanted to color this kitty like a tiger cat uh, because I thought that would add just some more interest to her I'm assuming it's a her I don't know why probably because my dog is a her I don't know my mom has a dog that's a boy and she always calls my dog him so I think that's we just assume that animals are whatever we have so anywho um, I wanted her to have just a little bit more interest so I gave her little tiger stripes so at first that's really all the shadowing, uh, the shadowing I'm adding is just where her stripes are going to be and then under her tail and at the very underneath of her paws I did add just a little bit behind her nose to give her face some dimension and then I'm gonna go back once I go through all the way light to dark when I go from dark to light I'm gonna start building up those shadows from before to fill in um, her actual body so she doesn't come out nearly as dark as the other um, aunt, the, the dog did because I really only added shading where there's another body part is on top of another one here I did not really like the way that the E21 was blending into the E25 so I'm gonna do what they call the tip to tip technique 
I'm going to use my lightest color to pick up some of the darker ones straight from the other one's tip. And then I'm going to use that to blend out the image. And I really liked that much, much better. Here's another boo-boo. So you saw me, you just saw me coloring purple. That pillow is clearly purple. And I like the purple, guys. I just, it didn't pop off of the, um, the ground like I wanted it to. And I should have known that going into it. Uh, but I didn't. And so it is what it is. And now I'm just going to go straight over the top of it with pink. Um, colored the pillow the same exact way. But I wanted you to see that, you know, there was a mistake in there. Um, nobody's perfect. I'm certainly not. So you just kind of roll with the punches. It did bleed out of my lines a little bit, but again, totally okay because I'm going to put in a little bit of shadow underneath and that will clean all of that up. You won't even know that it was there. So I did her pocket pink and then the flower yellow. Basically everything that I did on her that I didn't show you was the same exact as the boys. I didn't cut, I didn't cut you out of anything that um, was important. Here I'm using a white gel pen to just add some details into the images. I'm going to make her little pillow polka dotted. And then for his, I just drew some simple open circles. Um, again, you know, it's just something when, when somebody gets this in the mail, they'll see that, um, you know, there was a lot of detail and a lot of love put into it. Oh, I did give her a little overalls a pinstripe because I thought that would be cute. Um, originally, the reason I colored the pillow purple is because I saw her overalls as pink. Um, but it just, that purple, I didn't like it. So here I'm going in with the same C's that I used for his shoes and the dog's nose. And I'm going to just give them a little bit of ground to stand on. You don't want your images just floating in outer space. Um, so if you give them, even if it's just the subtle, um, illusion of some ground like this is, I'm not coloring anything you know, specific. I'm just putting a little bit of a dark area underneath them. It really makes a huge difference. So if it's not something that you normally do, give it a try. I think you'll really, really like it. Here I'm outlining all of my images with a journaling pen because that's what I do. And then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment down. Uh, like I said, the sentiment is from the Garden Buddy set. I'm using a W plus nines, um, black dye ink. This is one of my favorite inks to stamp sentiments in because it's super crisp. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Misty to stamp that down on both of the cards. And then these are the completed cards. So if you are watching this on or after June 5th of 2016, these bad boys are in the store. It is um, linked on the blog and then linked in the YouTube description. So head over and check them out. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.